Hey folks, and welcome to turn two of Project Suffrage, ImpGames.com Democracy Project for Hearts of Iron 3. If you don't know what this is, essentially it's a Let's Play video for the Soviet Union uh, and the Common Turn faction in the Paradox Interactive grand strategy game called Hearts of Iron 3. As you look, you can see um, the game is set during uh, right before World War II, and it's on a scale, a really unprecedented scale. So let's zoom in. As you can see, uh, like it's really crazy complex, and I know it looks incredibly complex, but it's actually like once you become addicted to the game and obsessed with it, it really uh, takes a life of its own, especially when it takes over your life. All right, so um, a democracy project is simply a let's play video game, you know, and you see these all over the place, you know, let's play Axis and Allies, let's play Doom, let's play freaking Mass Effect, or, you know, whatever, okay, but ours is slightly different because ours is kind of like a game in that it's not just that you're watching a game, it's that you're participating. We allow our viewers to take votes uh, to decide what actions we're going to take. Those viewers who become really fascinated with this uh, capability will soon have the ability to uh, log on to our website and create a, a citizen profile, if you will. And they will be referred to as premium citizens, and they will be eligible to win prizes. And as well, each for each uh, game that we're involved in, which is Term to Project, um, there's going to be a, a significant prize pool at the end, which is, uh, at this point, is being made of cash. And it's uh, a really unique way to incentivize playing the game successfully is that uh, you increase the cash pool by keeping the consumer goods uh, as low as possible without losing the freaking game. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it should be freaking fun, so... As well as they can win other prizes like, you know, whatever else that we have to give out. Uh, speaking of which, I'm going to start our first contest next week on turn three. Um, before I start that contest, I will be putting uh, some Magic the Gathering cards uh, from the newest set, which is Dark Ascension, as well as the previous set. And they're, you know, like werewolf and monster themed and stuff, so they're pretty cool. I'll be putting for them up for sale on the games uh, on Imp Games website uh, later today, and uh, one of these cards uh, a will be the prize for uh, winning uh, this first contest that we're going to have coming up. So I'll tell you more about that next turn. So now that we're three minutes in, let me go ahead and start talking about the uh, what I plan to do this turn. Um, Mostly there's going to be a lot of reorganization. I've come up with a new strategy for the defense of the Soviet Union. And if you're interested in what exactly that is, you can uh, visit this video here. Um, so just go ahead and click that box and it'll take you to that video. Um, the reason is that... The reason that I'm going to redo the entire... Stra uh, the entire... Um, uh, strategic positioning of the Soviet Union is because it's inadequate at this point and if I leave it exactly where it is I'm, we're just gonna like even Romania could roll over us you don't know how easy it is now at this point they can't roll over us because they have what three divisions and a whole bunch of neutrality but by 1939 that could be a big hassle so I'm going to uh, begin construction of a defensive line, a primary defensive line, and then a, um, so the primary defensive line will go, uh, if, if you watch the other video, it's going to be exactly like I covered in the other video, and it's going to go from uh, Leningrad all the way down to Odessa, all along the border. That will be our primary defensive line, right? The secondary defensive line will go from uh, Leningrad itself, so not just from Leningrad, like hopefully we won't lose Leningrad, but we'll go from Leningrad itself, um, and my goal is to have it intersect at Kalinin, 
and go down um, and hopefully end at around I'm thinking down here to Din Dnipropetrovsk Dnipropetrovsk whatever it's gonna the line's gonna go down there and we're gonna use the rivers themselves and it's uh, basis off defensive depth and the actual um, defensive lines that the Soviet Union used at the time uh, I know that use of rivers as well as fortifications near rivers was a, a huge thing and um, in some places actually proved really successful. So that's what we're going to do and we're going to stock them up full of garrison units. I'm also going to um, every single urban territory that is between myself and Germany as well as uh, concentrated urban territories uh, near um, Japan these are urban territories are going to be, um, you know, maybe two or three garrison divisions going to be put in there to help hold those positions because these urban territories are, like I've noticed uh, previously, they're like really hard for them to crack. So we're going to like load those territories up with garrison divisions that sole goal, you know, it may, like a whole core of garrison divisions, and their sole goal is to defend that territory to the last of them. Um, and that'll be it, you know what I'm saying? Like, that'll be it, man. Um, but first thing I want to do before I even begin doing that is I want to reevaluate where our industry's at because I'm not sure I set our industry up right. And I'm also going to pull these uh, armies off the front lines and organize them into reserve armies as well as uh, isolate our leadership because right now our leaders are all over the freaking place. Like I know Zukov is somewhere up here near Leningrad. So I'm going to pull the armies off the front line, organize them into reserve armies, and begin building garrison lines. Um, and I'm not sure if this has any effect on our perceived threat. Hopefully it should, you know, like our threat should start like decreasing or something. I don't know. But uh, while I'm organizing the reserve armies, um, yeah, it's going to look like we're going to have no defense whatsoever for a couple weeks. So bear with me. But first thing before I do all that, I've got to go ahead and handle this industry. I want to see where we're at and make sure I set that up right. So uh, give me a minute. All right, I want to go ahead and give you all a screenshot of this. Um, you'll see production is 24, supplies are 34, consumer goods are 51, which is pretty freaking high. Um, I, yeah, because I'm trying to lower some of that descent. Um, first thing we need to notice is that uh, our supplies are completely unnecessarily high right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. Um, and you're probably wondering, like, why the hell are you doing this, you know? But um, <clears throat> I'll show you why right now. All right, so I'm setting my supplies to zero, right? And so we're going to have a huge deficit. We've got 10,000 supplies, so let's give it a day, and we'll see what our actual deficit is. All right, and give it a second, give it a second. There we go. Um, 224, a deficit of 224. Right now, I'm going to go through and support by who has no energy and uh, compare that with who has money. And I'm going to sell off all our excess resources um, and then buy supplies from like the UK and stuff like that. It works out really well. That way, I never had to supply my troops myself and um, all that extra production is put or all that extra IC is put directly into production so that we can continue building our industry 
at a faster pace than ever before with the uh, a definite goal of um, you know vamping up our in ramping up our industry to the point to where we're like unstoppable all right so I'm gonna go ahead and pause and handle all that all right so I managed to get our uh, let me go ahead and show y'all. Okay. All right, so I managed to get our um, industrial capacity situation straightened out. As you can see, I now have uh, nine IC dedicated to supplies and a little over 50 IC dedicated to production, about the same amount dedicated to consumer goods. Uh, so our taxes are actually fairly low this turnaround so um, I'm gonna go ahead and record that into my little notebook um, but anyways back to industrial uh, uh, back to IC one of the main things I did was uh, I in addition to trading with Japan and France I bought supplies from both of them I ended up not having to sell to anybody I'm still gonna have to sell um, or not very much, but I'm going to still have to sell a good bit of resources to come out of this deficit. Monetary-wise, I'm probably going to sell some steel and electricity. But I'm going to keep those rare materials because I know those are used for developing IC. And I don't want the axis to do much of that, really. Um, anyhow, so in addition to buying supplies from France and Spain, I went ahead and appointed myself, Stalin, as uh, armament minister, uh, the military entrepreneurial uh, ad, uh, armament minister adds 20% supplies, um, which is a huge, huge gain, you know. Um, in addition, I am uncertain at what level we are actually um, researching supply production. So I'm going to go ahead and start that. And. not going to try too much in terms of diplomacy um, most of it's gonna st you know stay with espionage but we're gonna we're gonna do supply production because that will increase our supply production to another five percent and then the 1936 one will increase it another ten percent you know like it'll keep doubling on itself which is uh, fantastic for us really because the more supplies that we have produced from the less I see that we need to dedicate there the more uh, I see we can put in production or you know if this was a if we had more citizens they would probably be asking me to put in consumer goods but uh, we don't so it doesn't matter um, we'll need the I see to prevent uh, prevent us from getting rolled over when Operation Barbarossa comes around so that's what that's about uh, now I'm going to go ahead and distribute this new IC in the form of production. Um, I may start building our lines up yet. I don't know. So let me go ahead and pause this audio and I'll check back with you all in a few minutes after I've finished doing what I'm going to do for this turn. All right, as you can see here, I've, um, I'm now pulling away all my forces away from the Romanian front and uh, beginning to organize them into uh, reserve maneuver and reserve garrison armies. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure the computer is like, what the hell is going on, man? So, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll see. If they try to attack us or something like that, it's it'll be an interesting war because I don't think their neutrality is low enough to do that. But that would be interesting because that would give me a casus belly to attack them and take them over real quick because as soon as they did that I would take everything and flood it down there but like I said I don't think their neutrality is that low uh, I mean they're like a democratic society I think or no they're autocratic so they might be able to pull it off but I doubt they would because they know that it would give me reason to be able to crush them so uh so I'm pretty much pulling everything back and 
going to begin organizing everything in the Kiev Theater uh, that you can see right there. I'm leaving the northern, uh, the northern armies and such intact for right now because uh, I only want to do one theater at a time. I'm going to do this theater, this theater, and um, far east. I may make a. Uh, I may make a new theater out here. Because I definitely don't want the computer to think it can retreat up in here and I'll be happy with that. No, I want you to stay here and defend this to the last. Alright, so uh, that's pretty much the goal. As you see on the timer, it's now the 6th of March. So I have a little bit over a month. So I don't even think the armies are going to finish moving in order for me to begin reorganization. And reorganization is a little little time consuming but uh... like you know next turn is going to be three months so hopefully i'm going to be able to get everything out of the way for that theater on next turn so let's go ahead and fast forward this and i will see y'all guys next week thanks for watching and uh... make sure to check the website because i'm going to be posting uh... some magic the gathering cards for sale and next week we'll talk about uh... our first contest ever all right, take it easy.